Welcome to Let's Talk Cars Radio, your automotive specialist. Be a part of the program today by calling 757-222-3705. That's 757-222-3705. Email your questions and comments to Dave at Let's Talk Cars Radio.com. Now, here is the host of Let's Talk Cars Radio, Dave Palach. Happy Saturday, America. You're listening to Let's Talk Cars Radio. I am your host, Dave Pilach, and thank you for tuning into the show, hanging out with Rock and Larry Cobb. And Cameron is actually back in the studio doing all our technical work this week. He was actually off last week. So, how was your guys this week? Everything good? I'm just laughing and scratching. Laughing and scratching. <laughs> laughing and scratching. I'm not going to lie. I actually did miss the radio show. A lot. <laughs> and we missed you, Cameron. That's all smooch. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's not, that's not happening, guys. Nice try, though. <laughs> so we're going to kick it off a little bit different this week. We'll jump right into things. So has anybody been paying attention to the, uh, the news this week? Things have been kind of crazy out there with, obviously, the gas prices are uh, high for, what, the sixth week this week in a row. Yeah, I noticed. Uh, they're up there. But now here's a, the fact that gas prices are up there is one thing. But now there's been a lot of reports. Gas theft. And what I mean gas theft is credit card theft. So this is a huge thing. It's been all over the news. Um, people are actually stealing your gas by actually getting your credit card when you're at the gas pump. They're using little card swipers and stuff and installing all the different Those gas Those skimmers pumps. they talk about quite yeah, frequently. huge. So now it's actually come to Hampton Roads. Uh, it is really big in our area right this second. So uh, if you guys did not know and you guys have not been paying attention, uh, Pungo got hit. Uh, Aragona area, town center area has been hit. Uh, Newport News area has been hit. Uh, it is getting pretty serious out there. Mm. Uh, and it is spanned for all of our nationwide listeners. As you guys know, we broadcast nationwide, too. It's all over the country right now. And it's a, it's a big deal. Uh, have you ever been hit? Ever, ever had it happen to you? Not with a skimmer, but I got hit at a uh, gas station in Florida. I don't know how they got my number, but I was using a gas company card on, a, on business. And when I got home, somebody had taken that number from the gas card and charged about $600 with a long distance. Now, I had it uh, happen to me a couple of different times, unfortunately. It, it has it's affected me. And because I, I always fill up on my card. I just That's how I track everything mm -hmm. for expenses and stuff. I fill up on the card. So the, it's gotten me quite a few times. In fact, when we were in Vegas uh, last year, uh, when we were doing stuff with the show and we were recording from out there and, yeah. and broadcasting and stuff, they, um, a couple of different times wanted to use my card. Wouldn't even take my card because I get a report they thought that it was being scammed because so many different times I'd used my card out there that somebody right after I used my card then tried to use my card again. Mm. So it was a huge problem out there. And one of the things I noticed out there, and I think I told you guys about it, was there was a fee to use your card out there. Mm. If you wanted to pump gas using your credit card out there, they charged you a fee, sometimes up to $2.50. Uh, $2 I'll bet that was popular. Uh, it was normal for them. What, I, what was what what was ad normal to me was normal to them. Hmm. Like if you wanted to use your credit card to you got use nothing gas, for it. it's two dollars. You got nothing for it. Right, right. You pay two dollars to be able to have the privilege of pumping their gas. Yeah, it makes you want to go to the bank and get the cash. That's <laughs> right. I don't want to spend two dollars and get nothing for it. Right. It was the craziest thing. She was like, "Oh, that's that's real normal." I'm like, "How is that normal? I don't even there's a processing fee." And then here was the thing. So then I start checking into it, and it was different at different gas. Some places didn't charge you at all. Some charged you like 50 cents. Some was 75 cents. Some was a dollar. It just depends on what, what place you went to. I remember years ago when they would charge you so much extra a gallon if you used credit, and it was cheaper to pay with cash. But that's the only time I've heard of that, and that went away, you know. Well, I think that was kind of their theory, too. But the, for the fact of if you were going to fill up, it come out to be like $2.50. So they just went ahead and got to the point of just, let's just charge you right up front. <laughs> and this is where you can pay at the pump, they still charge you? Yeah. I they were going to charge you right up front. That didn't seem right. Uh, no, it wasn't. I actually, I refused, because I didn't know the difference between one place or the other, obviously. When you pull up the pump, it's not like there's a sign. So when I realized that was it, I just put my card back in my wallet, and I went someplace else. I was just like, So did you know what, before you bought the gas? Well, yeah, because it would, it would it prompt you to tell you there was a fee. Or some of them wouldn't let you pump. You'd put it in. And it would tell you, go see the attendant. And you go inside, and she's like, oh, well, there's a fee. 
And I'm like, oh, no, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> not for me, not here. Yep, and I, I, I get back in my car and go find some other place. Yeah. But that became so – and I started to wonder, like, every time that I ran into a place that had a fee is when I realized I was having problems with my card. So I was always wondering if those two were connected. So not only are you paying more, now you're having trouble. Well, yeah, then I, I would notice my card like would have like a fraudulent right after that. Mm, mm, mm. So just keep that in mind, guys. It's very, very interesting to me that we're having this problem in this area. And it's bad, from what I understand. Um, I got a little bit of information on it uh, this week, and it's really, really bad in this area and all over the United States right this second. That, it, that is the new big, huge scam that's going on. I've been hearing about the skimmers for some time. But it's now big at the gas pumps because those are the ones that aren't checked the, the most. If you think about it, think how many times you go to get gas, people, where you go and you just slide your card in, you pump the gas, and you go up on your way. Yeah. Well, that's nice because, and convenient. Right, because no one's really, you know, no one's paying attention to those those swipers. So that's the easiest ones to read. I look at mine to see if there's anything been altered on the on the key where you put the actual card. Right. Because supposedly there, you can tell that there's something out of whack. It doesn't look like it should. Well, I watched this whole thing uh, a couple of weeks ago where it's like a mold. And it slides right over the top of it. They have it like molded and cast it out of like fiberglass, and it just oh. clicks right over the top. And it looks like a regular thing. You slide your card in, but the actual reader's built into this cast it mold that slides over the top of the real reader. Man. They're getting clever. Makes you not, not want to pay at the pump anymore. <laughs> so what I'm saying is if you live any of the way Hampton Roads, before you put your card into a slide, make sure that you uh, check it real good. Grandma. Grandma said some of the pumps at uh, Las Vegas – when it even take cash that they demanded your credit card. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really scary. Yeah. That's when I'm smelling something real nasty. Then yeah, that's that's crazy. So yeah, keep that in mind. Oh, hey, so another cool one for you. So you know what, you know how if you guys don't know, I'll tell you. I like Legos still. You've, you've heard me talk about <laughs> yeah. it. I'm still a Lego guy. I like the Lego cars. Okay, I'm still building the VW. I got the VW uh, Lego bus. I'm still building. So you still play with them. I, I don't play with. I just I build them and I and I leave them. Shh, don't tell nobody. I, I build them and I, I put them in a corner somewhere on display, almost like art. You know what yeah. I mean? And some of these, I mean, what the Lego bus was like one hundred and twenty nine dollars for the Lego bus. And how long did it take you to complete that? I'm not done with it yet. Ah. I'm still working on it. Well, how long have you been working on it? Well, shh, don't get to that. Uh, <laughs> for all your secrets for, exposed. For, for, for a while. <laughs> I've been, I've been working on it for a while now. In your spare time. <laughs> right, in my spare time. That's what we'll call it, spare time. I've been working on it. But uh, So uh, Lego has actually got, if you if you ever wanted a 68 Mustang Bullet, you can actually own one now. So they got they decided to go ahead and do it uh, in Lego. So mm. you, can, you can own one now. That's kind of cool. It's You can build just about anything out of Lego, so it seems. You can, but now you can build the Mustang. That's the cool part. <laughs> well, you know, they, what was it last year? They had the F-150, the, uh, the Ford truck came out that you could build, and they got the McLaren, and there's a Mercedes. There's, I mean, there's all, different, there's all different kinds of stuff that you can, you can build now. That it keeps on coming. Every year, it's like they add something new. Um, they did the, the Beetle Bug, I think, last year, too. So, yeah, if you're into that kind of stuff, you think it's kind of cool. I see a lot of people are doing like I'm doing. They build them, and they just kind of put them like on, on a bookshelf on display. So. Yeah, I've seen some that people have done with that. Yeah, that's, that's my intention. Yeah. If I ever get around to finishing it. A nice display case behind glass. <laughs> no, I don't need glass or anything. I'm just saying, you know, it keeps the mind going. I got you. You know, people, everybody has their little thing. Don't yeah, they, you're right. They do. They why do, do. Why do I feel like you're judging me? Oh, uh, I'm not. <laughs> you have this look like you're judging me. No, I'm just. <laughs> So, so I play with Legos. What can I, what can I say? I, play, I still play with Legos. Listen, I played with Legos until I was probably 18, 19 years old. Did you, did you have Lincoln Logs? Yes, I did. Okay. And right. Tinker Toys. Yeah, I had Tinker Toys. And an too. Erector set. He has no idea what those are. <laughs> <laughs> those Tinker Toys were neat. They are. All right. So I got, I got a listener's letter for us. So you all ready? Hey, Dave. I have a brake question for you. I have a 2007 Honda Accord and the brakes squeal. The brakes are new, but I still have noise here and there. I have had the rotors looked at and they are fine. I hate that I put, let's see, I'm trying to read. Yeah, like I tell you, they give me these letters and sometimes it doesn't make any sense to me. They don't spell well. No, well, it's not that they don't spell well. It's, I think they get a little off track. 
I hate that I put all this work into my brakes and they still make noise. My friend says that I can put a little bit of spray on them and that that will take the noise away, but I hate to think that I'm just covering up a problem. Nick in Virginia Beach. Well, Nick, yeah, they do make a spray for it. I don't like the spray option. You're not, you're, you're right. If there is a problem, uh, basically you're just hiding the problem with the spray. You spray it on it, it does make the squeal go away. But if there is an underlying problem, then you haven't really fixed anything. Uh, brake squeal is one of those issues that you know comes up in conversation with any car guy you ever talk to, any garage you talk to will talk about brake squeal. And there's a lot of different things that can really uh, equate to reason why you have a brake squeal. A lot of times a brake squeal is caused by the fact that the pad is not making complete contact with the rotor. And we, what I mean by that is the complete surface isn't completely laying down against the rotor perfectly. And that's a lot of times where the squeal comes from. But you can also get a squeal from the fact that the pad is starting to get worn out. But the fact that you say the pad's new, well, we know that's not the case. The fact that you've had the rotors taken a look at, we know that's not the case too. You've heard me talk in the past where I'll tell you that check the slides, make sure the slides are greased properly. Make sure if there's a hardware kit, some do have a, a very extensive hardware kit to a car, some don't. Make sure the hardware kit's still good. But there's a lot of things that go into a brake squeal. You could just have glaze the pad. Uh, if you glaze the pad, pad, there actually will be a little bit of squeal sometimes to it here and there because of the fact that the way that the pad gets heated up and it'll actually cause a squeal or sometimes if you get a little bit of water on it, especially like today where it's kind of raining on and off where we are today you'll get a little bit of a squeal just from the water being on it so if it is here and there and it's not going away i'm gonna say that either maybe the pad's a little bit glazed maybe there's a little problem that is underlying with the rotor if somebody's taking a look at the rotor and says it's okay there could just still be a little underlying pad maybe you have a problem with the with the hardware like i said there's so many different elements to that that could be your problem. Uh, best thing to do is if you've uh, got a good auto garage, you hear me say this all the time, if you have an auto garage that you use and that you trust, take it to them. If you don't, once again, perfect time to meet a new friend. Take it to, do a little research, take it to an auto garage, meet a friend, let them be your steady auto garage that does your work all over, over and over and over again. And uh, let them take a look at it and tell you exactly what to do. Have them take a look at all the different elements because as long as everything's working together in conjunction with each other, that usually is the best way to identify what the problem is. Because a lot of times there's one component Component that just isn't doing what it needs to be doing. But so uh, take it into the auto garage, let them take a look at it, look at all the different components, and they'll probably be able to allude to what your problem is. Well, brakes are these, as far as I'm concerned, brakes are really, really easy to deal with. I mean, because they tell themselves. One way or another, they usually tell them themselves. I mean, I mean, you've done tons of brakes over the years. Because they wear. <laughs> well, they do. Exactly. It's the one part that does wear out. I mean, it will wear out and it will, it will show exactly what's wearing. And I mean, there's only so many pieces there. It's got to be one of them. I mean, it's, not, it, it's nothing hidden. It's no hidden secret. People, are, people are always seem to be leery of brakes, but I always tell them don't be because you'll pretty much be able to put your finger on it usually. And drum brakes squeal too. Yes, yes, they, they definitely do. I, I hate drum brakes. <laughs> I, over all the years, I just hate drum brakes. Is it, what the, is, what it, is it four-way disc brakes on cars now? Back when I messed with them, it was... Disc. Most cars, so there's still a couple things out there that still have drum brakes. Disc on in the front, drum in the back. Yeah. My Trans Am still has drum on it. I have the conversion kit sitting in a box. I still haven't put it on it. I yeah. just haven't got around to putting it on. But I have it. I own it. Just, hey, I'm too busy playing with Legos, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, i got a couple more reader. Uh, reader. See, I'm going to do it again. Right. Listener letters. And i uh, got some more news. We'll talk to you soon. You're listening to Let's Talk Cars Radio with Dave Palach here on Freedom 1110 WKQA. Your vehicle has let you down and you need to get it moved pronto. Who do you call? Quality Towing and Recovery in Portsmouth. Whether it's a breakdown or auto accident, Quality Towing and Recovery will be there quickly to solve your problem and with courteous service and reasonable rates. When you're stuck, don't worry about it. Call Quality Towing and Recovery in Portsmouth, 237-5050. That's Quality Towing and Recovery, 237-5050. Do you owe $10,000 or more on at least two federal student loans? Then you may qualify for new programs offered by the Department of Education. These programs can reduce your interest, lower your payments, and possibly qualify you for loan forgiveness. If you have $10,000 or more and at least two federal student loans and currently not in school, you may qualify for one of these programs. Call now to check your eligibility. 
Student Loan Advisors are standing by to help you determine if you qualify for these new programs. They can help you reduce your interest, lower your payment, and even forgive a portion of your student loan debt. Take control of your financial future. Make this free 5-minute free call now to Nationwide Student Loans and learn how you can reduce your student loan debt. 800-215-6817 800-215-6817 Welcome back to Let's Talk Cars Radio, your automotive specialist. Call into the program now at 757-222-3705. Now, here is Dave Palach. Welcome back, America. You're listening to Let's Talk Cars Radio on WKQA Freedom 1110. I am your host, Dave Pilach, and while we're at commercial break, I was looking for the closest Toys R Us to buy my new Lego set so I can have something to do this weekend. Hey, so I got a funny story for you. And this guy right here in this story is probably happy as can be about the Lego announcement of the Mustang. I guarantee it. You know, I don't know why. Because he's a Mustang guy. He is a Mustang guy, but for all the reasons that you're not thinking about, this story could not be made up. An Arkansas man named Shelby Mustang GT500 Miller. I'm going to read that again, okay? An Arkansas man named... I know you're looking at me. I'm not not making this up. I I really am not making this up. Named Shelby Mustang GT500 Miller. This is his real legal name. He had to change it. He wasn't given that at birth. I don't know. Was arrested for driving without a driver's license. (laughs) (laughs) So he couldn't prove he was Shelby Mustang. Uh, It is his real name. I actually went and had a, I went and looked this story up. Just I couldn't believe it. I was just like, but this is his real name. Yes, he and he was pulled over for driving without a driver's license. Uh, with a name like that, you you really got to have your driver's license on you. Mm, slacker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just because your name is Shelby Mustang doesn't mean you can't be a slacker. That is a mouthful. I mean, a complete mouthful. I yeah. mean, sir, what is your name? <laughs> uh, my name is Shelby Mustang GT500 Miller. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this guy should be a NASCAR driver. <laughs> he really should be. And as he comes around the corner, it's Shelby GT Mustang 500. <laughs> <laughs> Miller. <laughs> Miller. Yeah, Miller. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Driving without a driver's license in Arkansas. Well, it's clear he changed it. Uh, maybe. His maybe. mom and daddy didn't give him that name. I, I, well, you know, I told you I went to a gr- I went to school with a girl named Mercedes Benson. <laughs> I, I know her parents thought they were being clever. <laughs> I know they were. I, I, even as a kid, when I heard it, I was just like, okay, her parents thought they were clever. Yeah. Well, the giveaway is Shelby Mustang GT five hundred Miller. Yeah. I mean, I get Miller was his. His surname, but I mean, you put, who how, who do you know with a number for a name? I don't. This is the first one. <laughs> That's why you know he changed uh, it. R2-D2? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a human. <laughs> it's, oh, okay. Moving on. So Daimler and Bosch are teaming up, and they will actually be testing the first autonomous taxi next month. I guess a couple of them. So... In the report, in the, in the media report I got, it didn't tell me where, but the picture that was sent with the media report shows Vegas as the backdrop. So I assume this is happening in Vegas. Be a good place for it. Well, as it was pointed out to me, uh, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I mean, and that's not the place for technology, is it? Uh, well, here's the thing. Once again, we've been talking about this over and over again. We hear about, oh, this is coming, this is coming, this is coming. And then, like, within two months, it's, hey, we're doing this. You know what I mean? So uh, these are going to be dr- um, driverless taxis, and they're going to be testing them and running them. And I mean, we, you know, they've been doing that that motor coach taxi thing in Vegas, mm-hmm. what for a couple months now. So I mean, it's only evident that now you just have a regular just taxi driving without a driver. So huh. I thought Johnny cabs were already out there somewhere. It's funny because <laughs> uh, in the media release today uh, that I got. That was one of the pictures. It was the picture of Johnny, Johnny Cab yep. with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger yep. sitting in the back seat. Was was the picture <laughs> that was in one of the press releases today. So you must have saw the same one I did. That's the only thing I could think of made you think of that. Have a nice day, sir. Yeah, <laughs> that was actually the picture that was attached to it. So, um, 
Another thing, you remember when we were talking a couple of weeks back about purpose built vehicles? Mm-hmm. Okay, how a lot of, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, we've been talking about this for uh, about three or four months now. A lot of the manufacturers are starting to take a look at purpose built vehicles. And what I mean by that is building a vehicle for one purpose and one purpose only. So let's just say that you decide that you want to be in the pizza business and you want to deliver pizzas. So Ford or Toyota, whatever, is starting to look at, okay, we're going to build a vehicle that's going to be for that purpose only that's gonna just be designed for the pizza guy or be designed for the Uber driver or the Lyft driver. Well, it's kind of funny because we just had this conversation. It was just announced you know, a couple months back. They just started to look at this idea. And then we jumped forward to the Chicago Auto Show, which was this weekend. And they have actually shown that they have a purpose-built vehicle. And when the tra- you know the Transit is, right? Mm-hmm. You've heard of the Ford Transit? Yeah. They are kind of purposely building that for the baby boomer. So that's even though that's kind of a small step, it's just kind of show you that it's a purpose built vehicle. That vehicle they design and have purposely built this new model for the baby boomer because the baby boomer wants something that is easy to get in and out of, can haul some luggage, but it's easy, it's low enough to be able to get things in and out of the back and stuff. So they purposely built the vehicle for that generation. Makes sense. And when you look at it, you can tell at, that it was they thought it through. The way that the vehicle is built, it was built for solely that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So it's kind of funny that we just went from just having a conversation about this of purpose-built vehicles. And then you look at this vehicle at the auto show and go, they took into account every single thing that goes with the baby boomer generation. And that vehicle would 100% fit that. So now I can kind of see what they mean by it. And like I said, I understand this is a, it's a little bit of a jump for that, you know, for what purpose built for pizza delivery to that yeah but it just shows you how the mind thinking is starting to change of okay we're going to start building vehicles for purposely built for this or that and that's just the first jump and step when you look at it and it it, it really is if you haven't seen this vehicle and you which kind of want to see how this works and how the mindset is starting to work go take a look online and look at it and you'll see exactly what i mean the way they did the clearances on the vehicle, the height of the vehicle, the way the cutouts and the door open on the vehicle and stuff so there's no obstructions as you get in and out, it, it makes sense. It's purposely built for that person. And it, it, so it's interesting. Well, they've been building purpose-driven vehicles for years, have they not? Not really. What's not a dump in, truck? That's different, <laughs> though. You know, you know what I see? That's different. We're not talking about taking a car or vehicle. We're not talking about Ford, Toyota, Chevy and stuff going okay guys let's put the brakes on everything and stop for a second and go we want to build vehicles for this purpose only for not not like hauling sand or dirt or anything like that but we're gonna this is gonna be for built for this exact person for this type of person for this type you know just like we were talking about the rolling stores if you guys haven't followed us in the last couple weeks this is huge it went from an idea within like two months They had a rolling prototype of a store that drives itself. And if you haven't seen the pictures, we posted some of them up, so go take a look. And it's actually just a store on wheels that drives itself. Instead of you going to the store, the store is constantly driving around your city. You type in on your phone on the app and say that you want it. And the store just swings by the front of your house and stops. You get on it. You do your shopping as the store is driving around. And it eventually will make its way back and drop you back off. I mean, that's barber shops pizza places the pizza place store drives around and pulls in front of you and delivers your pizza right off the store in front of your house i mean these are purpose-built things that no one ever thought about and curtis used to laugh at me when i said the rolling living room i mean but this is basically the exact same idea it's the same concept i'm still trying to grasp it i I like the idea i just can't imagine how they're they're going to pull that off and be profitable I don't know. It just shows you how much technology is pushing so quickly in that direction when it comes to automobiles and everything. This is quick. It is so quick. Uh, Just three short years ago, we were laughing about all this stuff. I mean, it was just three years ago. You remember, we were laughing about all this stuff. We thought it was funny. We joked upon it. We we had a good time with it. It made great entertainment for this show. But it's now reality in three years. A lot of this stuff is just complete reality. It's just, I don't know. It's, It's interesting. 2020 is not that far away. No, no, it's not. You know, here, so here's the thing. Do you remember me telling you, I want to say it was almost two years ago about, I think it's called, I want to make sure I pronounce right, the, the E-Hang 
184. It was a uh, flying car, like drone flying car. And then I also told you about the Airbus flying car. I remember the Airbus. Okay. They're both being tested this week. That's it. They went from concept to drawing to now they're actually built and being tested this week. And next step is on the market. Right. I mean, you know, they gave a price. They have the one that's more like, when I say flying car, so they have the one that's more like a helicopter. Okay. And it's just, it's a flying car. Top speed's 100 miles an hour on the road, which is still pretty fast. And then it stops, you hit a button and the wings pop out of it and the helicopter kind of thing kind of expands out of it. So it's more like a flying helicopter than a car, but they still call it a flying car. Um, I think the price tag on it's going to be like $399,000, which is really isn't that bad for what it is. I know. It's still $399,000. <laughs> I get it, guys. I really do. But I mean, but for what it is and for the first stage of it, it's still not bad for somebody who, I mean. Eh. Yeah, I can just envision it in 10 years, there'll be people complaining that we have sky pollution because there's too much traffic in the sky. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think? Uh, no, I do think. I, no, I, I do think. I know. I, I do believe that that is the case. While you're describing that, I'm looking out the window thinking of a sky full of vehicles going to and fro. But every week we talk about how technology keeps on progressing. It keeps on moving quickly. And we talk about, you know, we, it, it was four months ago we were talking about the Airbus, about the, the Airbus was talking about this, and now Airbus is actually testing this week. So if we have more traffic in the sky, does that mean less traffic on the ground? No, because now here's what you have the problem. So the biggest complaint that cities have right this second, guys, is the fact that Uber and Lyft are polluting the streets with so many cars that the congestion is crazy right this second because there's so many ride-sharing programs out on the road that it puts tons more cars on the road. Because well, I guess that makes sense. Well, the plan is eventually it's supposed to dwindle down, okay? Just so you understand, they totally believe that car sales – is going to dwindle by 2030 is what it is. So by 2030, the thought is, is car sales is going to ramp way, way down. It's just going to go ahead and just dwindle and dwindle and dwindle because people will rely on car service and they'll stop buying cars. That's the thought process. So with that, they're hoping that less cars on the road because people will own less cars and then you'll have just Uber and ride service and Lyft and all that on the road and people won't have to own that many cars. But then you have the other side of the fence that says there'll be too many of those on the road and it'll actually be more congestion than if you had just owned a car. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. You can flip a coin and find something on either <laughs> side of it. You really can. I mean, either side of the discussion. Every time I have a discussion, I find people on both sides. So you, you can't win that argument. An argument you can win is the one that I'm going to go to commercial break. And we'll talk to you soon. You're listening to Let's Talk Cars Radio with Dave Palach here on Freedom 1110 WKQA. Your vehicle has let you down and you need to get it moved pronto. Who do you call? Quality Towing and Recovery in Portsmouth. Whether it's a breakdown or auto accident, Quality Towing and Recovery will be there quickly to solve your problem and with courteous service and reasonable rates. When you're stuck, don't worry about it. Call Quality Towing and Recovery in Portsmouth, 237-5050. That's Quality Towing and Recovery, 237-5050. To commemorate Black History Month, here's Dr. E.L. Branch on the special bond between African Americans and Jews that Dr. King and others inspired. If any group could identify with the plight of black people in America, it's our Jewish brothers and sisters. Their history has also been marked by slavery, oppression, ghettos, hate, and deprivation. That's why Jews stood faithfully by our side in the fight for civil rights. We've always come together our two communities. Now, again, we're standing together against the anti-Semitism and racism of today spreading around the world. The fellowship stands in solidarity with the African-American community. Learn more about the shared bond between African-Americans and Jews and their struggle for civil rights with the booklet On the Front Lines of Faith at ifcj.org slash frontlines. Welcome back to Let's Talk Cars Radio, your automotive specialist. Call into the program now at 757-222-3705. 
Now, here is Dave Palach. Welcome back, America. You're listening to Let's Talk Cars Radio on WKQA Freedom 1110. I am your host, Dave Palach, hanging out with Rock and Larry Cobb, and Cameron's doing all our technical work for us. So before we went to commercial break, we were talking about all the technology advances and stuff. Here's one technology advance that has not changed, and that's a listener letter. And he's got a problem that seems to always come up. So I'm going to read it to you guys. Dear Dave, I have a vibration problem in my 2003 Ford F-150. I'm starting to feel a vibration at around 60. There is no noise, just a steady vibration. I've had the tires checked and balanced, but it hasn't gone away. A friend checked the ball joints and the wheel bearings for me and said that they're fine as well. Do you think it could be the torque converter going bad? Jason in Norfolk. Jason, I don't think so. <laughs> um, if you have a vibration problem and you start to feel it about 60 miles an hour, the quickest way that I'm going to tell you that I believe to test it is get up to about 60 miles an hour, put the vehicle in neutral and turn it off and see if you still have the vibration. Hmm. It Makes might, sense. Yep. If you've had the wheels checked, you've had the tires checked and everything, and the vibration is still there, the very first thing that I'm going to take a stab at is I'm going to say drive shaft, U joint, or something like that. You still feel the vibration because now everything's kind of turned off, and you got the rotation in the drive line. That's where I would point to. Yeah, because the drive shaft can get out of balance. Oh, yeah. And the U joints go bad. The, the, 97 to 2003, 2004, I think it was, uh, the Ford F-150s had a real problem with uh, U-joints and drive shafts. So they got out of balance quite a bit. It might be where the problem lies. It very well could be. Jason, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. I'll be wrong again. But <laughs> um, that's what I would check. I would just you know turn everything off, just get it about 60, turn it off, everything off, and just put it neutral and let it run. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, see if it does. And it's it's, you know... Doing it's it. one way to isolate it. It's one way to isolate it. Know if it is doing it. And if it's it's got a vibration. And if not, and that doesn't work for you, and you still have the vibration, once again, take it down to your local auto garage. Let them take a look at it. Check it out for you. They will get to the bottom of it for sure. Without a shadow of a doubt, they will find it. And once again, if you don't have an auto garage, it's a good way to make a friend. I love it. I, I just think, you know, I, once again, you guys hear me say it all the time. If you find a good auto garage and you can make a friend with a good auto garage, it is the best thing for you because they then they know the history of your vehicle. There's no longer guessing. If you continue to just drop into an auto garage here and there every time you have a problem and it's a different auto garage every time, then they know nothing about you. They know nothing about your vehicle and you're not building a relationship. And that does nothing for you in the future if you ever have a problem with your vehicle. So take my advice. It is the smartest advice. Really, it is. So. I hope that helps you, Jason. If not, hopefully the auto garage can help you. We'll Indeed. See. Yep. All and right. it's good advice. It is. I try to give good advice. I mean, I've followed that. I've learned. I went down that path and found out that a good relationship with a good garage means a lot. I get so many, like, texts. I talk to friends and I get emails and stuff of people who just pop in and out of auto garages. And then when they have a problem, they want to send me something about the problem they have. And I'm like... I've told you how to correct that. Why you don't listen, I don't understand. Why would you just, every time you have a problem, you stop into a different auto garage? I don't understand. If you just kept going to the same place, they have the history of their vehicle. They know what they've checked. If you're going there for your oil changes and your regular maintenance and your checkup and stuff, there's a built history. They know all the things they've checked over time. They know they've done to the vehicle. Why would you go to this? Or here's another thing that got me on a roll. Here's another thing that irritates me. <clears throat> so I took my car to this guy and he repaired something. Now, I think I had the same problem, so I took it to this guy and had him check it out. That makes no sense. No People, sense. I, I kid you not, I do not understand why you all do that. And it happens all the time, all the time. It used to happen to me all the time. Well, I let Bob down the street work on my car, and I had him put a starter in it. And today I got up, and the car wouldn't start, and it sounded like the starter was sticking. Can you check it out for me? Why not go back to Bob down the street? <laughs> my, my silence, people, if you can't tell, was my silence of confusion. If you had Bob last year put a starter on your car, and now it seems like the starter isn't starting your car, why are you here having me check it out? Why didn't you take it back to Bob? Indeed. It, it's even got a warranty on it, I'm sure. Why are you here? <laughs> and then they get irritated at me when I go, when I'm being is the nicest guy possible, and I say, I really don't want to check it out. Because I know you have a warranty. Why don't you let Bob check it out for you? Because if I touch it, and I tell you there's something wrong with it, I may void your warranty because I touched it. So you don't want to work on my car? Um, 
I don't think that's what I said. That's called not <laughs> listening, Dave. <laughs> right, right, right. I don't think that's how I presented it to you, but um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to help you out. I, I, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. It, I have these conversations all the time. I really do. I'm sorry, but I do. <laughs> I believe you. So that, that was my rant. <laughs> I haven't had one of those in a while. That was that was my that was my little rant. Oh, so here I got one for you. Did you guys see the video of the car thief uh, this week who got caught in the car while he was trying to steal the car by a bunch of people? No, didn't see that. He's in front of a subway, trying to steal. It looks like an avalanche or something like that, and they catch him trying to steal. He's trying to hotwire it, and they catch him. So they just lean on the door so he can't get out and wait for the police to come. <laughs> he's just pretty neat. He just stuck in the car. He's trying to hotwire it, but he can't. They pull a car behind him and block him in so he can't back out, even if he does get a start. So did he get arrested? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the police show up, and they, he's defiant, refused to get out of the car. So then the police, bust the, unfortunately, bust the window of the guy's car out because he refuses to get it out. And then they just tase him. <laughs> <laughs> then they tase him again because he won't get out. Talk about making life harder for yourself. So here was the thing. So they're tasing the guy, and then one of the things I noticed in the video is all of a sudden the sister's like, that's my brother. And I'm like, you know she had been there the whole time watching to see how this was going to play out way before the police ever got there. But decide not to say anything until he was getting tased? It's mm. a little weird. Yeah. Justice, right? Yeah. Right. At, and, that, different, at that point, what difference does it make? It, <laughs> exactly. And then there was the other video, which was awesome. It was actually filmed by another radio station that, was, uh, that went viral this week. Of There's a guy trying to break into, uh, looks like a truck or an SUV, on their parking lot at the radio station and the, their surveillance cameras catch it so they catch the whole point of this guy trying to break into into the vehicle so what they decided to do is they took the video and then put commentary to it the radio the radio show <laughs> host and they're like and he's standing up and he takes a swing at the window oh and he falls down you know because <laughs> he's like he's like the worst criminal ever he's trying to break in and the guy's like hurting himself trying to break into the vehicle and he's falling down and it's, it's crazy, but it was good. So if you guys haven't checked those two videos out, uh, go online and punch them in and uh, check them out. They're worth a, a good laugh for the day. They're actually pretty funny. They got sent over to me. Uh, one of the listeners uh, by the name of Aubrey actually sent them to me, so they're actually pretty funny. And uh, I, people send me the strangest things, just like the bumper bully stuff. I yeah, I want to go find the one about the guy breaking into the avalanche. Yeah, go, go check it out. It's actually it's, it's, it's a good thing. So here's one for you. Do you guys remember we talked about before that BMW was considering charging subscription fees for uh, for CarPlay? So if you wanted to use your CarPlay inside your vehicle, um, you had to pay a subscription fee to use it. And they caught a lot of flack over that, that there was going to be a subscription fee for you to use something that was already came with the car. So that makes sense. It didn't. And it, that kind of came and went away. That story came, you know, like anything does in media, the next best thing comes and it goes away. Well, Lexus is now up at bat and they are catching a lot of flack because they actually want to charge you a subscription fee for you to use the app on your phone for the auto start program on the car. So if you want to use auto start on your car from using your phone, you have to pay like a $329 subscription fee to be able to use that app. And that's $300 per what, year? I think so, yeah. It ain't worth that to me. Right. <laughs> but it already was supposed to come with the car. That's one of the features that they're advertising about the car. But, uh -huh, but they don't. To, they don't tell you there's a subscription yeah, involved? Yeah, seems to be what it is, yeah. It's misleading at best, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you need to pay a subscription fee to be able to use that option on your phone. Mm, I hate that. I don't like to be that's almost bait and switch i have it on my i have it on my truck there's no subscription fee for it we set it up when we first got the truck i can go and unlock my my truck and all that kind of stuff from my phone there's no subscription fee for that have it back out and come over and pick you up well that's sure okay <laughs> i'm sorry i'm not lazy enough to have to walk over to my i mean i'm i don't need my truck to back out of a parking spot guys and come get me i'm lazy enough <laughs> Are, are you, do you want that feature really it's yeah. a big truck i don't think i would even try to risk having to back up the truck i rather know i'm in full control of backing up the truck yeah i um, yeah because if i hit something then it doesn't bother me i park i'm, I'm that guy that i park far out same i park far out in the parking lot it doesn't bother me to park far out in the parking lot and i walk to my truck and it doesn't bother me to do so i used to i'd i'd like to kind of park close now whenever possible I mean, I won't ride around the parking lot for hours looking for a closed spot at the front door, but 
it's I like to park as close as I can find something. Well, we you've talked about that. I make my own parking spots. Well, yeah, we've already. So heard. do I. <laughs> <laughs> I, I. I make my own parking yeah. spots. I just I just do. That's, I make my own parking spots. I've seen pictures. Yes. Well, <laughs> hey, when you have a truck as big as mine, you have to make your own parking spots. You don't have a choice sometimes. You're not the guy that parks over the line, are you? Okay, so I don't have a choice sometimes. I mean, you know, you park like straddle the line. You're taking up two spaces. No, 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 no. I don't do it that way. No, I'm not that guy ever. Okay. Now, I am the guy, unfortunately, because of the length of my truck, that I actually have to back up and sometimes take two parking spots back to back, unfortunately. Yeah. So the length of my truck, and it depends on, and now before you guys send me hate mail, let me explain myself. Because of the length of my truck is, for me to back my truck up so I'm not hanging out into the drive lane, sometimes I have to back my truck in. And when I back it in, I have to have part of the tail of my truck in the parking spot behind me. Does that make sense? Yeah. If not, you, I block the drive lane with my truck because of the length of my truck. A full-size Chevy truck, and I'm not a long bed truck. I'm just a full-size bed truck, and I'm a four-door truck. The length of my truck and some of these parking spots, they keep on trying to make smaller and smaller. The only way for me to get my truck out of the drive lane is for me to actually back it up and have the tail of the truck actually in the lane be, in the in the parking spot behind me. Probably room for a smart car to park in back of There is, there, or, or a smaller <laughs> sedan. But if yeah. you're another full-size vehicle, you could not park in that parking spot beside, behind me if you're a full-size vehicle. But if you're a smaller vehicle like a little Honda or something like that, you could tuck into it. But yeah. if you're, a, if you're a, like a Dodge Durango or you're a full-size vehicle, no. You would, you would have, then you'd run into the same problem I run into, and you would be sticking a little bit out in the drive lane. I don't see a problem with that. I hate doing it. I actually feel bad about it when I have to do it. It actually does bother me. That wouldn't bother me as much as when somebody parks over the line or taking up two spaces or they park diagonally. I don't do any of that kind of stuff. I, I, don't, I just don't believe in doing that. That's, the reason, that's probably the reason why, Larry, that I actually do park farther out because I hate inconveniencing other people. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I'll park further out in the parking lot, so I'm not inconveniencing people. And I just park out that way. That way I know that if i got to hang over into two spots. It's, it's, but here's what I find. I park far out, and then I come out, and there's people parked around me. And I'm like, there's eight parking spots between me and the, and the pile of cars. And for some reason, people just decide they need to park around me out there. I don't know what it is. The magnetic effect. It is. <laughs> I'm going to coin a phrase for it one day. I don't know what Your it is. Your truck draws other vehicles. <laughs> yeah. It, it draws everything, apparently. So, hey, do you guys see, uh, you know who Gordon Ramsay is, right? Mm-hmm. Did you uh, see his little blurb that popped up in the media this week about him uh, basically admitting that he – detects uh, tickets or deflects tickets no i no i didn't see that he openly admits he takes saran wrap and wraps wraps it around his license plate so when the automatic uh ticket machines that take pictures of license plates for speed and stuff like mm -hmm. that uh, can't get them because he has saran wrap wrapped around his license plate why not why just buy the spray and spray it on there i don't know he said he puts saran wrap license around his i think he drives a ferrari or whatever it is and he wraps sooner it or later he'll get arrested for that Oh, yeah, because it is highly against yeah. the law. But he was like, oh. And then it was, I don't know. They, have you seen the little, speaking of, have you seen the little pucks that they have now? They're basically like a radar detector, but they're actually, right the second, they're legal. You put them on their dash, they're, they're, they're a radar detector, but they're not. They're a social media device. Have you guys seen these things? No. Somebody sent me um, an article on it this week. It's just a little round, and I, I tried to look it up before we came on the air because I, want, I wanted to talk a little bit more about it, but I'll put it out there, and I, and I will find some more, more information on it. But there's just this little round disc, and you put it on the dash, and basically what it does is it connects with other social media devices, almost like the smart, you know, I told you smart devices talk to smart devices talk to smart devices, mm -hmm. and it just turns colors. Green means the road's clear of police vehicles, and you know, blue means a police is present and stuff like that. And Yellow it, means there's a radar in use. <laughs> so, and, it, and it's basically what it's doing is it's bouncing off of other people's phones, I guess, and stuff like that, all the other, other connected devices, and that's how it's getting its information. I use Waze. It's the best app out there. Yeah. Well, I'm just, like I said, I saw, I'll have to tell you about this, but somebody sent me a picture of it, and they're like, have you seen this thing yet? And I replied back, I was like, no, but there was no other information yet. And they, they just kind of gave me a brief, brief description of how this thing works. So I want to do some research on it. If it, it detects it. radar, would it be illegal in Virginia? But it's not, basically, it's not detecting radar. It's, it's not called a radar detector, but can it do that? I don't think that's how it works. My understanding by what she sent me was, is it, and I will find more information. I, 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 it's basically, it's, other people's devices are bouncing off other other people's devices looking for radar. So it's actually not a radar detector, 
it's actually just taking information of radar, other radar detectors maybe in the area. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. That's, that's kind of a way of skirting around it. It really <laughs> is. It's, it's, it's kind of cool, though, but I will find some more information. I want to look it up. So, But uh, I, I want to see if you saw it. Maybe think of that as five, a ways of getting around the law with Gordon Ramsay. So I want to ask if anybody heard of it. Uh, you know what? We're going to take a quick commercial break. It's that time again. When we come back, we're going to talk about GM still trying to get around re the recall on airbags. We'll talk to you soon. You're listening to Let's Talk Cars Radio with Dave Palach here on Freedom 1110 WKQA. Your vehicle has let you down and you need to get it moved pronto. Who do you call? Quality Towing and Recovery in Portsmouth. Whether it's a breakdown or auto accident, Quality Towing and Recovery will be there quickly to solve your problem and with courteous service and reasonable rates. When you're stuck, don't worry about it. Call Quality Towing and Recovery in Portsmouth, 237-5050. That's Quality Towing and Recovery, 237-5050. Attention to anybody of any age who takes any prescription medications. How would you like to save up to 85% on almost every prescription drug you're currently buying at your local pharmacy? We're talking about saving you real money on most of the top prescription drugs. Up to 85% savings on the blue and yellow pills that men take. Asthma medications, you can save up to 85%. High cholesterol and high blood pressure meds, save up to 85%. And many, many more. This is not a hard-to-use discount card. These are real savings on prescription meds delivered to your door in days. We have expert prescription consultants to help you right now. It's a free service. So call now and learn how you can save up to 85% on most prescription drugs. Call now, 800-308-2249, 800-308-2249, 800-308-2249. That's 800-308-2249. Welcome back to Let's Talk Cars Radio, your automotive specialist. Call into the program now at 757-222-3705. Now, here is Dave Palach. Welcome back, America. You're listening to Let's Talk Cars Radio on WKQA Freedom 1110. I'm your host, Dave Pilach, and we are just hanging out. We were talking about ways to obviously avoid the police. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they don't like that very much. So we'll talk about avoidance. Did you guys hear that GM has now put in their third appeal to avoid their recall of the Takata airbag situation? Had not heard that, no. Yeah, so that got sent over to me. So you, you guys know I'm... Chevy guy through and through. I mean, take a look if you guys are on Facebook Live. By the way, keep on clicking into Facebook Live. We love it. Viewership keeps on going up and up. We're doing Facebook Live every single week. And you know, still working out some of the bugs. You know, it happens. We're not video people. We're radio guys. So, but uh, um, yeah, GM, 6.8 million vehicles that are at risk that are going to have to be recalled. And they have put in their third request not to have to pull these vehicles in. And do they have to give a reason when they file a request? There's a lot of stuff that goes into this. I'm going to just say it right now. Uh, GM, just recall the cars. Just, let's just be safe. I mean, let's, it's affecting uh, Chevy trucks, I guess, from, what, 2007 to 2011 is what it's going to be. And the number that's out there right this second is about a billion dollars is what it's going to cost. So it's an expensive recall, and they don't want it any up. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand. We know how many lives have already been affected, and we, we are all affected by this. And you, you guys know, if you've been listening to the show and if you guys have been a loyal listener, it's, it's affected us here at the show. We've talked about a lot uh, with Heavy Hearts how this has affected a lot of people. And um, yeah, just just do what's right. Go ahead and let's, let's re recall these vehicles let's get them in and let's get them checked out they may, you're right there may not be anything wrong with your vehicles you may 100 percent be right but let's just go ahead and let's get them checked i mean it's not worth it it's just really not worth it, it really it really bothers me on a, on a lot of levels than when we know we have these recalls out there and we're not doing what we need to be doing that, that just bothers me so much so i understand dollar for dollar cents for cents and and i get it and you know and i i love my chevys i do but uh 
you know, I, I can just see, you know, I hate for such a great name to have such a tra- something tragic happen and it would get ruined over something so silly. Yeah, so, I get that. So we'll see what ends up happening. I mean, I also understand there's a lot of things that go into that probably I don't understand because I'm not involved. So I'm sure they have their reasons why they believe they shouldn't. But at the end of the day, heaven forbid something happens. If it's so, a safety issue, do the right thing. It is, and that's that's what it comes down to. So uh, on a lighter note, i got another good story for you. So <laughs> i got some funny ones this week. I do. Who keeps stealing cars and returning them? <laughs> <laughs> no, this this is a real story. This keeps on happening. There is a car dealership in Niagara Falls, New York, that keeps on having cars stolen from them, and then somebody keeps on bringing them back. I wonder how long they keep them. Uh, I guess like maybe like over the weekend and stuff. As what from reading the report, like they go missing for over the weekend or maybe just a little bit longer, and then somebody brings them back to the, the dealership and drops them back off. I mean, they bring them back in the dead of night when nobody's around. Nobody's or? sure. They just show back up. This has been going on for about six months. <laughs> <laughs> they just they notice the car is missing and then all of a sudden one day they notice the car is just back on the lot well if that's happening over that length of time i think i'd be on the lookout or i'd have something set up i would at that point would say it's somebody knows the lot really well you yeah. know what i mean you'd have to know the you know what's going on at the lot the layout of the lot you'd have to know really well if it's disappearing and then coming back that easily friend of an employee friend lives close by and knows yeah. the traffic of the lot something I mean, I remember when I was I was younger. Um, they had a pro- they cars were getting stolen left and right out of this dealership lot that was close to our house, and you know, it ended up being somebody that was very very close to the lot that was able to monitor the lot and the security of the lot and everything like that. So, I'm, s- I'm gonna say it's gonna be something similar to that. <laughs> Steal it and bring it back. Funny story though. I mean, it makes for a cool story. I guess that makes them only half bad. You're right. <laughs> I was just borrowing it. <laughs> it was just—it wasn't stealing; it was borrowing. Leave it in good condition. Yeah, you, you, you bring it back. Apparently, <laughs> filled it up with gas. <laughs> Not today's gas prices. Maybe half a tank. <laughs> that makes them half bad. They, they put a half a tank back in it. Enough to make the needle move. Yeah, yeah, right. right. <laughs> I put a little gas back in it. Uh, egg Dodge guys, not to fret if you own a Dodge Demon. It has been confirmed that the Demon is going to be a one-year production only. So. If you bought one and you're wondering why you had to pay so much money for it, maybe it will actually be a collector's item since they have decided not to do a two-year production of it. So if you don't own one yet and you're thinking about owning one, you better get out there and get yours because they are not going to do a bunch of them. That's kind of cool, though. Yeah, well, it's got a big price tag, so I don't think they're going to sell a lot of them. Was it like 80, 85000 when they were trying to jack them up for the popularity of it and stuff? I don't know. Cool car, but, I mean, the fact that i got to sign a waiver to own one, I just kind of... This car is not for freeway use. It's not for driving in water use. It's not for leaving the garage use. It's not for this tire use. Well, then what use is it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you could die, crash, and burn if you drive this car. I mean, did I cover it all? <laughs> you could, that could happen in any vehicle. All right. I, just the fact that you thought it was cool to have somebody. I, I, I don't know the. Not, I, I, I don't understand the waiver. It was that for. And the people that sign it, how many of them do you think are do abide by the rules? None of them. Not it, one. Because it's not enforceable. Right. Not one of them did. So, so here's a thought, and it's something that's kind of put out there for you. How many people think that what we're doing about using cell phones and cars is enough? Obviously, the texting part is not enough. Right. So, and I agree with you because I mean I see people texting all the time. Yeah, it's chronic. So there actually is a thought out there that even pulling over isn't enough now. So I think France is actually the one that's looking at it, that even they'll give you a ticket even if you pull over the side of the road. Now that you're on the side of the road, that's still not enough. That's a step in the right direction. Right. They still want to give you a ticket, though. If you pull on the side of the road and use your device, now you're in you know, obstruction of traffic because you're on the side of the road. Okay. Then what's the answer? Just don't use it at all. That's the answer. Oh, well, I don't find that hard to do. Um, I don't see why that'd be they're a still looking, They're still looking at the cell phone killers in cars. You get inside the car and the cell phone is rained useless. So, You know, that'd be one way to nip it in the bud, so to speak. It would be. As soon as the ignition turns on, that's it. It doesn't yep. work. I mean, I, I still think that would be... That would solve the problem. That's the best way. So here's another thing. Worst traffic cities came out for last year. Any guesses what they were? Los Angeles. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> that was number one. Can you guess number two? Mm. New York. You're right. It was number two. Can you guess number three? You guys are doing pretty good. Wow, that was pretty good. Virginia Beach. <laughs> no. No. Anything? Guess for number three? 
I'm sure it's a big metropolitan area, but it I don't is. know. Dallas. Uh, no, but Dallas is on the list. Dallas is done in the number 10th spot. San Francisco is number three. Uh, number four? Atlanta. Yes. I can believe that. Yep. Number four was Atlanta. Number five, any guess? Chicago. Uh, no, Chicago is in the number eighth spot. I'll give it to you in order. It was L.A., New York, San Francisco, Atlanta, Miami, D.C., Boston, Chicago, Seattle, and Dallas. All right. I'll buy all that. For last year. I can say D.C. Yeah, D.C. But D.C. is only crazy like during like a short like a short hours period of times. And that's it. But not like other, like other places are just crazy all, for I, long periods of I've time. I've been on the Beltway at 4 in the morning and had bumper-to-bumper tra- traffic, so I don't know when the off time is in D.C. No, I've been in D.C. where I drove right through it without a problem. Man, I would love to experience that just yeah. once in my life. I've had it happen quite a few times. I used to have to go up there for a lot of cases and stuff like that. And I'd go through and traffic wasn't bad. Wow. So I, maybe just time of the day that I was up there is what I figured but there was you know stuff so here's the last of it before we end up wrapping up the show so I got in a conversation this week that it was kind of cool and then I started thinking about it that most people probably wouldn't think it was cool but I think it was cool do you remember going on road trips with your family indeed were, yep how many how many brothers and sisters do you have uh, one brother Okay, did you guys try to like figure out the space in the back seat when you went on road trips and stuff like that? Who's going to lay and sleep where, stuff like that? No, we just each, we, it was a big bench seat, seat and it, we, I sat in one corner, my brother sat in the other. Okay, we, we didn't. We just did something different, and, uh, which I always thought was normal. And then as I got older, I, I thought, okay, that probably wasn't normal. And then I got in a conversation and found out that I wasn't as abnormal as I thought. So there was three of us, my brother, my sister, and me. My sister being the eldest took the seat okay we each shoved pillows in the floorboard into the where you put your feet at mm-hmm. and then lay a sleeping bag across and that became a bed so it made everything level and i used to lay down there okay so i lay on the floorboard and make a bed on the floorboard my brother would crawl up in the package shelf and lay on the package shelf <laughs> so I thought, as a kid, I just thought that was normal. I thought that was just no- a normal thing to do. Yeah, but whoever's laying on the floor can't look out the window. Well, that didn't bother me, but I had a bed. You know what I mean? I could lay <laughs> down. And then I start thinking about now with all the seatbelt laws and everything else like that, like how abnormal that would probably be to, to tell this story to somebody as I tell it now. I realize it sounds abnormal. Yeah, especially crawling up in the back shelf. Right. Well, we had a we had a Bonneville. I think we like 78 or whatever Bonneville. And so I had a huge package shelf. Yeah. And my brother would crawl up on the package shelf where the window was. So if anybody driving by, you just see a body laying up in the package shelf. Yeah. And that was what we did. It was just a normal thing. So I get in this conversation this week and find out I wasn't the only one who did that. <laughs> the the package shelf seemed a little odd to them. Yeah. But the shoving pillows on the floor and making a bed out of the floorboard was their normal thing to do, too. And the pillows were to get rid of the hump. It was to get rid of the hump. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> so I got that conversation. And I was just like, okay, so I'm not as abnormal as I thought. They thought the packet, they were like, well, the package shelf, they didn't think the package shelf was abnormal. They just didn't realize you could put a body up in the package shelf. And I was like, well, yeah, in this old Bonneville, the package shelf was huge. You know what I mean? So you could get somebody up there. My brother was real skinny. He would just crawl up there and lay up on the package shelf. My sister laid on the seat, and we, I laid on the floorboard. And that's how we traveled at night, you know, <laughs> when we used to go on family road trips. But, yeah, I just well, got that thought I guess if it. you're traveling at night, you don't have to look out the window. Not really. <laughs> it's, it was comfortable. As odd as it would be now to see, I'm sure, I can picture people trying to think about this right this second, as, as odd as that would be right this second, to see somebody driving like that. That's how we traveled. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Keep that with you guys for the weekend, all right? You yeah, guys just you won't envision. Do, all right. You won't do that today. Yeah, you won't do that today. Well, you guys, that is the end of our show. It is Saturday. Hope you guys are enjoying your Saturday out there. Enjoy your Sunday. Turn the TV off. Spend some time with your kids. They'll enjoy it. They'll love you for it. And we'll talk to you soon. We're out of here.